Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lisa Matrokin. My lovely assistant today is Foxdale. It's happening more and more often. I don't think he will last, though. He usually doesn't. Thank you, everyone who came to the show early. A lot of you were here half an hour before we went live. I really appreciate it. However, I, I have a favor to ask. When you come to the show early, please hold your comments and questions that are show specific until I actually start rolling. Because right now there's a whole list of comments and questions that are really good, but I won't be able to keep up with the chat, the live chat and the previous comments. So they may just disappear altogether. So for all of you who were sharing your thoughts on pencil brands and skin tone coloring and had questions about what we're doing today on the show, I'm going to ask you to please retype those once I actually start lecturing. Today we're doing a test drive of these pencils. This is Castle Art Portrait, and this was kindly sent to me by Michaela Schumann, among some other things that will be reviewed on the shows to come. Fox <laughs> The dog, he is with us. Do you guys want to place any bets on how long he will last? The last couple of times that he was live on the show, he lasted about five minutes. I'm going to give him 20 this time. He's been spending more and more time in the beanbag. If you care to place your bets, place them in the live chat. One other thing before I switch my screen, I got lots of gifts from other members of my community. Thank you so much for using my... Amazon wish list and for sending me things. Next time I will be reviewing things sent to me by Michelle Wall. And also super special thanks to Stacy for always sending me cool shirts. I'm wearing one of them right now. This is my favorite. I really appreciate it. I love you guys. And on that note, let's switch the screen. And for this demo, I'm actually going to take myself off the screen so that I can show you how this box looks on the inside, all of the cool things that are attached in there, and then we can start the coloring. You should still be able to hear me though. All right, so this is a box of 24 pencils and it comes with a whole bunch of paperwork and leaflets. Of course, Castle Arts is a huge brand, so they will show you all of their other products, but we don't care about that. We care about this one. They have paints, they have pencils, blah, blah, blah. We don't care. Of course, it comes with a color chart. And this, I believe, is a color chart for the entire set. Someone asked before the show if this set is... Yes, your comments are visible. They are appearing on the screen right now. Someone asked on the show, um, before the show started, if this set is a um, specialty set or if the colors come from a larger pool. I believe based on the numbering on the pencils and this giant color chart that it does come from a larger pool. And this right here is the larger pool of all their colors and whatnot. Now, it also comes with this leaflet that is very important. I am now in the habit of actually reading these and uh, this one comes with instructions. Now I am a little bit familiar with Castle Arts already. I have their large set and when I did a test drive of those, it came with clear instructions that you need to start lighter and build up your darker colors. It's exactly the same here, true to brand. They tell us that you can create a portrait in five easy steps, starting light, they expect us to actually draw this portrait. We will not be drawing from scratch. We will be using a coloring page. Now, coloring pages come in black ink, so we'll have to deal. This uh, leaf leaflet tells us to start sketching our lines with a brown pencil. As an artist, I do agree with that. That's an excellent, excellent tactic. Then we will continue with lighter pencils, our lighter colors, building up our darker skin tones, getting darker and darker, and finally adding all of our darkest detail. That is generally a good strategy, but what we're learning from this leaflet is that they're telling us 
that their lighter colors do not layer well on top of their darker colors. That's the real reason for that the whole leaflet. Now, this is the book we'll be working in. This is one of my published books. The links to that is are in the video description as always. And I flipped through this looking for a nice candidate for a skin tone page. I've worked on that page a lot. I've done some dark skin tones on that model. We've done a lot of these pages together for different lessons. And finally, the page that I settled on is my portrait of Ostara, which I've actually done before, but not in this color scheme. And that was years ago. So I thought a lot of you new audience members will find this page interesting. And there it is. Now, this page, and let me put you guys and myself back up on the screen. This page is available, of course, in the book. And it is also a free gift for all of my patrons. For the patrons, it is available in two versions. I will be coloring in a book, so I'll be dealing with black lines. But if you are a patron of mine, you already have the brown line version waiting for you. Why did I make that special version for you, you ask? Well, just like the leaflet suggests, Starting with brown lines will greatly help our actual realistic skin tone effect. So if you want to practice that and follow their instructions exactly, jump over to Patreon, grab your free gift page in its special brown condition and try it out. I'm going to be popping up the names of the pencils on the screen. So if I have a designated pencil name color outer, please do take note of the names that are popping out just for a few seconds. And when people ask what color this is, please post it in the live chat. So I will follow most of the advice in the leaflet. Of course, some of the rules will be broken because I am I, and I do like to test my boundaries. I do like to test the boundaries of the products that I'm reviewing. And I also have my own art style already well established. Finally, the skin tone that I'm creating is different from the skin tone in their leaflet. The girl in the leaflet has darker bronze skin, which requires more brown tones, less pink undertone. My skin tone is very pale, very cream. So I'm going to be dealing with different colors here. And my lighting is different. She has slightly dramatic lighting on her face with very dark shadows around the eyes. So my application of darker tones will come in slightly differently from what they suggest. But generally, I will follow the rules of lighter to darker. I am working on white paper with black lines and I am working directly in the book. This is the Amazon Kindle publishing paper, which I did a review on a couple of weeks ago. So if you missed that, go back to my channel, go back to the live streams and check out that one testing the Amazon KDP paper quality. Spoiler alert, at the end of the show, I arrive at the conclusion that the paper quality is actually spot on. It's not amazing. It's not out of this world. The best paper I will ever use, I have ever used, will only use from now on, but it's absolutely good paper. I had no complaints about it. So I am coloring on it yet again. As I am adding this first color, I see that the chat is going crazy and I'm once again not keeping up with it. So I'm just gonna scroll back and say hello to everyone who's in the chat. Remember to give this video the thumbs up if you are enjoying it. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and that notification button so that you know when I stream. All right, we had Michiko here with us, Gail. Uh, Tara, Ty, hello, hello, Nightbot is with us. Kai, welcome. Uh, let's see, Michiko says, I think they have tutorials on their websites and copies of the, of the line art that are on the picture of the boxes. That is really good to know. Well, I, if you guys don't want to color my art, if you want to color theirs, that's fine, that's fine, but, uh... <laughs> That is not what we're doing on the show here today. We're coloring my coloring page. Uh, but it is good to know that you can follow their steps exactly and color their exact models. That's perfectly fine. Uh, repeat messages, that's, that's no problem. Don't worry about it, you guys. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have a question. 
live in the live chat. The question is, what's your favorite pencil brand for skin tones? You guys were super chatty before we went live and now you're not talking about the pencil brands. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the show, I'm not going to scroll back and read all those comments because then I'm going to miss the ones that are coming in right now. I will only read the ones that are happening. If I miss anyone, I'm really sorry. As you can see, sometimes the chat scrolls by really quickly. If you really want to get my attention, we do have a super chat option that automatically bumps your comment to the to the very top and it helps support this channel so i do appreciate the super chats regardless cassandra is here welcome it's always a pleasure to have you on the show we are working with skin tones and we are working with this castle art portrait set which i am really enjoying I don't make you wait till the end of the show to tell you how I feel about the products, but I will be telling you everything that I'm experienced during this process of coloring the page. So I am trying to follow the rules as much as possible, but as the show goes on, you will see that not all rules were followed exactly. For instance, I didn't actually follow their specific pencil names, like I have eyes, I am able to tell which color is light and which color is dark. So I play a lot by ear, I play a lot by eye and by feel when I select my colors. And again, remember we're dealing with different skin tones. So someone said that they have tutorials, that's fantastic. I love when pencil brands offer also tutorials and offer coloring materials. That's, that's all great bonuses for the brand and great for the colorist, but you can't rely on that. The whole point of having these tools is so that you can apply them to other colorings. Maybe you don't want to color that model. Maybe you have your favorite coloring book artist whose book you wish to complete. Everyone creates coloring illustrations in different styles with different line thicknesses. You know, obviously we'll still have line work here at the end, but that goes with the territory. This is the type of art we're dealing with. We're dealing with a coloring page. So obviously we're going to have some outlines. So please don't be shy. Do tell me now in the chat um, what your favorite brands are for skin tones. That is our main question of the day. For me, I'm very heavy on Black Widow pencils for, for skin tones to this day. It's one of my favorites. I actually saw a comment from someone on my very old show. I did um I did a review of the Black Widow Dragon and someone's like, oh my God, you're totally getting paid by Black Widow because I hate them and everything you said is totally not true. And I'm like, I wish I was getting paid. I am totally not sponsored by any of these brands and all of my comments and my reviews are 100% honest. And sometimes they're brutal. And sometimes I praise the brand and sometimes I praise only a specific quality of the brand. I have no horse in this race, you guys. I don't care what you buy. Buy whatever you want. Color with whatever you want. I don't care. None of these brands are mine. None of these brands pay me. My job here is to test the product and to tell you how I feel about it and how it works for me with my style and how it may be applied to other different styles. But it's on you to make those decisions and to test them out yourself as well. No one will ever agree on anything 100%. There are brands that I love that some people hate. There are brands that I can't stand that some of you swear by. And we'll never agree on that because we're all individuals. We all have our preferences. We all have our tastes. We all color on different paper. We color different artists' work. There are just too many variables. And sadly, not all products come in the same quality in different packages. Some brands change their quality throughout the year. I pointed out to the person on the Black Widow uh, Dragon, was Dragon or Monarch? It was one of those. Um, to the person on that video, I pointed out that the video is two years old. I can't speak for Black Widow right now. I have no idea if Albert changed his manufacturer or if he changed the chemistry of the pencils. I'm not responsible for it, nor do I test them every few months. You know, I do the review when I do the review, but things change. For instance, on the last stream, we discovered that the paper quality of KDP Amazon actually changed. And we found that out by pure accident because I kept saying, you know, uh, it feels different to me. I colored in this book years ago and now I'm coloring it again and it feels completely different. My response to it is completely different. And like, 
tons of people in the in the live chat are saying that's because they changed it they changed it i'm like well there you go it feels totally different clearly they changed it i just love colored pencils like all colored pencils you don't discriminate between them at all you don't you guys don't have like your go-to colored pencil that that you prefer for skin tones uh so for me i still very much like black widow skin tone sets for skin tone which is uh unusual for me i tend not to be locked into specific sets like sets specific for for a, a purpose like if somebody came out with a fur set i probably would think it's a gimmick because not all fur is created equal and lighting is a huge component of any visual effect so it's the same thing for skin tones i teach skin tones i teach multiple courses on skin tones and in all those courses which by the way you can find on udemy and on skillshare um, I teach very specifically that it's not locked in stone. It's not like you have, you know, light skin tone. This is the formula. Darker skin tone. This is the formula. Darker skin tone. This is the formula. No. Um, first of all, there's so many skin tones that you can't even cover them all. Every single individual has their own unique skin tone. And then, of course, we have to deal with lighting and atmosphere because that plays a huge role in how we place out colors on a two-dimensional coloring. No preference. I just love them all. They have, they all have pros and cons. The only ones I will toss in the trash are crazy arts. Never heard of crazy arts, but judging by that comment, I'm probably never even going to give them a try. Well, the reason that I ask is because skin tones behave a little bit different from other types of coloring. And I actually have very strong preferences for skin tones versus any other kind of coloring, um, mainly for layering and for blending. And so Prismacolor is my all-time favorite brand, but for skin tones, I actually still prefer Black Widow skin tones. It's very specific. So even if I'm working on a single composition, I will often do the skin tone in Black Widow pencils and then I will switch to Prismacolor pencils for hair. And actually, that's how I teach the courses as well. My skin tone coloring course is both of my skin tone coloring courses are in Black Widow and my... Um, hair coloring course is in Prismacolor pencils. So I, I like to mix and match my brands. When I saw this one though, and I put it on my Amazon wish list, I, um, I found it very interesting. And the main reason that I found it interesting is there, there are lots of brands out there who are like, this is the portrait set, this is the skin tone coloring set, and none of them really caught my attention, but this one did. And it's mainly due to the color selection. You have the top row with your creams and peaches and golden tones. And the bottom row is very heavy on purple and blue and gray, all of which are absolutely necessary undertones and shadow colors. So again, as anyone who has ever taken my coloring course on skin tone knows that we cannot do skin tones without a violet. So the Black Widow skin tone sets are um, also like that. They also offer some violet tones, but they're very few and they're very pale. So I'm actually starting to use them less and less. I like the texture of Black Widow a lot, but, um, but I wish there was a bigger selection of actual colors. I find my Prismacolor too smushy. Perhaps I'm too heavy handed. I would definitely not call Prismacolor smushy. Um, there are different sets of Prismacolor. So I don't know which one you have, but there are harder ones and softer ones. And also it depends on paper. If you are smushing Prismacolor, I suspect you are correct. I suspect you are a little bit too heavy handed. It should not be smushy. It takes a lot to smush a Prismacolor pencil. So um, I, I would agree that's probably too heavy a hand, in which case, Black Widow skin tones would actually be better because they are smoother. And since we're doing a review of Castle Arts, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the application. I'm working right now with a very light pencil, one of their lightest. The name popped up on the screen when I pulled this pencil out. So whoever took note of that, let us know in the chat what that was. If you're watching a rerun, obviously you can take your own notes when the questions pop up on the screen you can play it back play it forward and whatever so so far i'm finding this application very friendly very soft and i made a note to tell you guys that i think this particular brand so far 
judging by this very first pencil, is going to be very friendly for, specifically for heavy-handed people, uh, which are very common. <clears throat> Excuse me. Heavy-handed colorists. Oh my god, dude, seriously? <clears throat> Not even half an hour into the show, I'm losing my voice. Who wants to take over for me? Foxtail? No? <laughs> no. <laughs> Heavy-handedness is pretty common in coloring. A lot of colorists suffer from it, and it's not a big deal at all. It's something that you can absolutely work out. It usually comes from trying to speed things up, actually. If you, if you just mellow out and go with the flow, and if you realize that you don't need to apply pressure to create a certain effect you just need to add more and more layers you will actually do yourself a huge favor holding your pencil further back is hugely helpful in coloring lighter if you're holding your pencil halfway up the stem or even further it's impossible to apply a lot of pressure so do try that trick hold your pencil a little bit further back and you will not be as heavy-handed Additionally, shading quickly and lightly will help your shading technique and your blending technique. So right now I am just using one color, just as the leaf leaflet suggests, use starting from lighter to darker. And the application so far is very smooth. The color is quite beautiful. The areas that you see that are darker are achieved by applying more layers, not by applying more pressure. I am never warping the paper. I'm never warping the surface. And even though this is smooth enough already, I'm going to try to use my Q-tip blending trick and see if it works. I always try it on every new plant, brand to see if it actually applies to this particular pencil. And it does. It's not a huge difference. It's not like a night and day difference, but it is making it a little bit smoother, making that blending a little bit softer. So I, I like the details, you know, for me, the devil's in the details. And I always try to bring my coloring to the next level of perfection, a little bit closer to perfection. So always, if you can make it a little bit smoother, especially for skin tones, it is essential. You don't want to see any kind of sketch marks or stretch marks or scratch marks on your page on skin tones. You definitely don't want those faces looking hairy. Our next color is, wait for it, something darker and something a little bit more on the auburn side. This is, drum roll, Terracotta Light. The names I found are also pretty friendly. And the presentation is nice. I always like bla black sheath pencils because my, my first true love was Black Widow pencils and that style always appealed to me. This is in the same style. The wood itself is not black. The wood is nice and light and the, the sheath is black but we have a nice sample of the color on the back tip of the pencil, which I also found to be true to the actual lead color. There are some brands that I review where I'm constantly complaining about how that tip looks nothing like the pigment we get on the paper. Not here. Here, it's very true to what's advertised, both in name and in that color sample. For now, I only have Polly's, Castle Arts, and the Monarch sets, and I use them all for my illustrations. No experience with other brands, though. All right, if you like the Monarch set, I would highly recommend that you get some of the other Black Widow sets, mainly the skin tones, uh, because the Monarch set is very heavy on green, although this is Tara Corvus. She does like green quite a bit, so perhaps her owning a Monarch set isn't that surprising. Uh, but green obviously doesn't give you a lot of skin tone opportunities, so I wouldn't actually use the Monarch set for skin tones. But if you like the feel of the Monarch set, you will love the skin tone sets from Black Widows. But you have to get both of them. One of them won't cut it. It has to be. They call it the light skin tone set and the dark skin tone set, and it doesn't actually work like that. It's not like the light skin tone set will create light skin tones and the dark skin tone set will create dark skin so. so, so tones uh it's not it doesn't work like that you have to get both of them even if you want to color a light skin person you have to get both of them if you, even if you want to color a dark skin tone person um is there information on light fastness on this set in the review i did not see that in my immediate reading of the leaflet but I will check it out. Honestly, I think that the whole light fast thing is a little bit overplayed in the coloring community. I don't think it's as important as people make it out to be. And I genuinely never check that quality. 
I don't think it makes a difference at all, to be honest. I think it's a bit of a gimmick. Um, but we'll do a whole other show on that, explaining why, uh, explaining like the technical reason behind it, what Lightfast actually is, and why you really shouldn't worry about it that much as a colorist. But I will definitely check on that for you and let you know. Yeah, um, I, I get on better with the firmer pencils. I think polychromos are my favorites. I love polychromos. Even though I like um, very smooth and oily pencils, I also really like polychromos. Uh, but also I like Castle Arts Gold. Ah, yes, those are really great. Hey, Stacy, welcome to the show. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ty says the high quality brands generally have the light fast information on their websites. The more budget types brands do not. Very true. But again, I don't think the light fast thing is important for us as colorists. That's just my opinion. And I will be doing a separate show on that if you guys are interested. I like the dragon set too. Me as well. I do like the dragon set. Uh, dragon set is still not available on in Germany. Oh my God. Really? That's so weird. That is so weird. Uh, yeah, other people in Germany are saying it's still not available. Very, very weird. Uh, I just Googled the light fast and apparently castle arts are not rated, which is probably why they didn't advertise it at all. <laughs> but for me, that's not a dropping point on the quality of these pencils at all, because again, I don't think, I don't think it's that important. Nor do I think any of you can actually tell the difference in real life while working with these pencils so i don't think i don't think you should use that as a measure of how good the pencils are i always encourage you guys to make your own decisions based on your feelings and experiences rather than on trendy titles and fancy names like Lightfast. everyone's throwing that name around like it's really important it makes them sound like they're artists and honestly that's not the selling point of a, of a pencil at all is this the most amazing, incredible pencil experience I've ever had? It's not, but it's not disappointing at all. So far, I am very pleased. Actually, I'm more on the pleased point than on the indifferent side of the spectrum. So far, these colors are very beautiful, very pure, very true to what's advertised in, in the color chart and on the sample on the tip of the pencil. They so far are layering beautifully on the page. So far, I haven't done any layering of color over color. I'm just doing color on the naked page. We did the, the first layer with the very pale pinkish skin tone, like a dusty rose. And now I'm adding a little bit of this light terracotta to the hair. When I do portraits, I like to take care of hair and skin at the same time, even though I teach hair and skin separately in two different courses. When I actually am working on a portrait, I like doing it at the same time so that everything matches. Case in point, the eyebrows have to work together with the face. The eyelashes have to work together with the face. Whatever color hair is, there's going to be a little bit of a reflection on her skin. So that's one tip for you guys. Don't separate the hair and the skin. Try to start building up those colors together. Scorpion said is not available in Germany either. Oh my God. Um, have you tried the Artix colored pencils? I just got the 72 sets for very cheap and they're the closest to Prismacolor I need pencil brand I've tried. I have not tried it yet. I will put it on my Amazon list though, so someone can send it to me. Uh, maybe Albert it. <laughs> no, Albert's a sweetheart. He has no control over it, you guys. Um, none of us do. When we put up things on Amazon, we have no control over international stock. Like Germany may have their own rules about something and something didn't pass the test. We don't have that communication with Amazon. So for instance, I offer my books on Amazon. This book that I'm coloring in right now is on Amazon KDP. But every once in a while, people write to me from different countries and they say, this month in France, this book is not available. This month in Japan, this book is not available. That happens to me all the time. And I'm like, there's nothing I can do. I can't even contact Amazon and find out what it is. I have all the boxes checked, offer in every single country on the planet. And sometimes they just don't. And I think it's specific for Amazon based in that country. It has nothing to do with the seller. Uh, the Lightfast rating is something that you really need to worry about if you're selling your work. 
that is a good point. That is actually a good good point because obviously you want your work to last for a long time. So if it's a commission portrait, absolutely you should use light fast pencils. But honestly, pencils without a light fast rating or a, a low light fast rating, they still like the art still lasts a long time. It takes an incredible amount of sun damage to actually fade these colors. Like these pictures will be around for long after we're gone. So I don't think we need to worry about it too much. But but yes, indeed, if you are selling your art and if it's going out, if it's a commission portrait, if it's going out to a client, you want it to be in the best possible condition imaginable and you want to pretend that they're going to have it kept in the worst possible conditions imaginable. So whatever you present to, to them has to survive the test of time. I have the Arctic set. Uh, but haven't had the time to sit down with them yet. Oh, okay. It just means how long the pigment will fade. Exactly, exactly. But again, it's the reason that I think that the whole concept of light fast is overrated is because it's a difference between it fading in 98 years or 120 years. Like, do you really care? <laughs> and even when it does fade, it's not going to fade completely. It's not like a charcoal drawing where charcoal actually falls off the page. So honestly, I, I think the whole coloring community obsessing over light fast is a very weird social media trend. And I think the, the, the term light fast makes people think that they are more professional than, than they really are or something. I just don't think like I am a professional artist. I do commission art and I don't. I don't base my brands on light fast quality at all. The brands that I happen to like tend to be high level light fast brands anyway, but that wasn't my selecting factor at all. Like once it's out of my hands, I have no guarantee what my client is going to do with it. Like they can have it outdoors. They can have it behind glass. I don't know what they're going to do. They can put it in the room where they apply hairspray to their hair and the whole thing's going to melt in a week. So there's no way that we can protect against that. Hello, 699 Jude. Welcome to the show. And thank you guys for joining the live chat. And thank you everyone who's watching right now. Again, if you want to join us in the live chat, you have to be a subscriber. So hit that subscribe button, join us in the live chat and tell us about your go-to skin tone pencils. I am now test driving this castle art portrait set that was sent to me as a gift. Thank you very much, Michaela. Let's see. Ah, oh, you guys know each other. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you for coming to my show. All right. I did promise you that some rules will be broken. And here it is. Who caught the name of this color that we're using right now? Was anyone paying attention? I wasn't. And I certainly don't pick my colors by color names. I pick them by what they look like. And that's what I encourage you guys to do as well. Try to build up that intuition. Try to trust yourself more and if you haven't taken my skin tone course any of my skin tone courses i highly recommend that you do my skin tone course on realistic skin tone coloring i teach on toned paper so this pencil brand actually won't work for that if you're taking the realistic skin tone course on udemy i would go with prismacolor or black widow or something along those lines i would not go with castle arts however my skin tone mastery course, which is also available on Udemy, that covers five different skin tones and teaches you how to build your own color charts. That skin tone course I teach on white paper. And for that, I think this set will be absolutely amazing. So if you've already gone through that course, I encourage you to try a different skin tone, perhaps one you didn't do yet, but using these pencils or something similar to these pencils. Um, Ah, exactly. I wish I had known much sooner the light fast thing. <laughs> well, it doesn't hurt. It certainly doesn't hurt, you guys. If you pick a pencil that is light fast, that's like super duper all appraised and, and guarantees that it will last for 300 years, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't, don't let that be the deciding factor. There's so many other things that are a lot more important, like layering and color blending and how you actually feel using the pencil. If the pencils that are your favorite and are the most pleasant to use and you create the most beautiful results with, if they are not rated for light fast, then screw it, you know, use them anyway. Cause again, it doesn't matter. It's not like anyone's going to sit around for hundreds of years waiting for your drawing to fade. 
Plus, in this day and age of digital art, we all have photos of our art in its pristine condition. So there's that as well. Certain colors fade faster. If you can't fire ratings and uh, want to know, you can do a test. Swatch them out on two sheets, put one in a dark place, put one in the window and leave for 30 days. I have done tests like that. Yes, those are excellent. Make sure that you do them with really intense and bright light and actually putting them out. You want to put as much as much UV damage on the page as possible, basically. So if you want to put it even outside, that will be better. But even running those tests, you will see that the damage inflicted upon the color is minimal. I've never seen anything that does extreme damage. And also consider like how many people are going to have their pictures hanging outside in their gardens in direct sunlight. Like, if you're just coloring for fun and this is a hobby, especially if you're coloring in books, like you're not going to hang your books out to dry on the laundry line, right? Like they're colorings in books. Occasionally you will flip through the book and look at the colorings. It really doesn't matter. Like Stacy said, if you're sending your work to a client, that's a, that's a different story. Obviously you want the work to last as long as possible. Sepia is the current pencil. Thank you, Ty. Someone's paying attention. Oh, right. I got totally derailed. Okay. So breaking rules. I like to do it. The little pamphlet thingy told us to start light and build up our darkness. Uh, so realistically following their instructions, I should have had another step here with a slightly darker um, color before moving on to this dark brown. However, I'm very confident in my shading scales and I know the exact effect that I'm going for. I'm working from a still from a movie. This is Ostara from American Gods. So there's a there's a point where she is summoning the spirit of spring and she's singing and, and she's being the goddess that she is. And um, there's very warm light on her face, but there's also very dramatic shadows around her eyes. So I know these shadows are going to be very dark. I can start building them up now. And my Q-tip trick is working beautifully. So the only thing that it means, you know, working from lighter to darker, is that now the areas that I made darker, I can't lighten them again. But that's fine because I trust myself. I trust my process. I know I can handle a skin tone because I've only been doing it for 35 years or something like that. <laughs> I was gifted full sets of Holbein pencils, um, too expensive for my budget, but are good pencils. I love Prismacolor pencils best. Same here. Prismacolors are my favorites, absolute favorites. So for those of you who are coloring along with me, if perhaps you're watching this not live, if you're watching this later or re-watching this later and you're doing the same portrait, which I hope you do if you color the same page in a book or if you're a patron, you have this as a free gift with brown lines as well as black. If you color this, do share it in the community. The link to Tom was up on the screen at the intro. It's in every single video detail. Someone sent me a message on Facebook asking how to get to my... Uh, do my private art club. All the links you'll need for anything are in every video description and on my website. So you never have to message people trying to figure out where to go. All the links are very easily, easily available. So join my club, Tom, and share your colorings and also share your experiences. Tell us what you thought. Like maybe you didn't like these pencils. Tell me why. Again, my job here on the show isn't to sell you a brand. Like I said, I don't care if you buy these or not. Couldn't care less. But I like to test out as many brands as possible and possibly share with you something that you didn't know already. You can't, like I can't buy all of these brands. That's why I have my Amazon wish list. If I had to buy every single one of these to test drive them, I would go broke in like a month. There's no way that any of us can buy every single brand of pencils that's out there. Thankfully, I have an amazing community of people who are kind enough to look at my Amazon wish list and actually send me these things. And that way I'm able to test drive them. But I want to test as many of them as possible so that you can make a decision without having to buy them. Perhaps if you see this show, you will be able to relate to it and say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a heavy handed colorist. And you say that this brand is good for heavy handed. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Perhaps you like the effect that's happening on the screen and you think you can create a similar effect, then maybe you should try this brand. This is a small set. This is 24 pencils. Um, I don't remember what it was on Amazon, but I can't imagine that it was much for a 24 pencil set. 
uh, now some 24 pencil sets are unreasonably expensive. I don't think this was one of them. Um, if anyone can look up the price right now on Amazon and let me know, that will be greatly appreciated. I'll, I'll say it on the show so that the rerun people can know for sure. And of course, the links to the actual set are in the video description. So if you want to go and check like really quickly, just grab the link from the video description. It will take you straight to the set. You don't have to search for it. Um, so I assume the customer will probably not notice. The customer will never know what you used. They will just receive the artwork. If after a month, your customer calls you or writes to you and says this all faded, then probably you need to worry, but I would also ask them how they kept it generally with, and, and again, I've been doing this for years. I've been doing commission art for decades and, um, I've never had anyone complain about the quality of, um, of my actual work, <laughs> not the quality of the art, not the, not the quality of the material that I use to create art. Like people still have my drawings. People still have my paintings and my tattoos and nothing's faded. Everything's exactly the way that it was. Most people take care of art, especially if they paid for it. You know, art is not cheap. I hope you're not selling your art cheap because it shouldn't be. We spend a lot of time and a lot of um, care goes into every single commission work. Commission work is hard because you have to get into the mind of your client. You have to care about what you're making. You have to understand them. You have to make it look like whatever they wanted to make, to make it look like, you know, if it's a pet portrait, they have to look at it and see their actual pet. So it's very difficult work. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of skill and it takes a lot of care. You should not sell your work cheaply. So when people pay hundreds of dollars for a drawing, I guarantee you they'll take care of it. They're not going to have it out in the sun. So probably you don't have to worry about it. I printed lots of different face pics on the same paper and colored each with a different brand. It was interesting. That is an amazing experiment. I would love to see that if you could share your um, photos and your thoughts on different brands in the community. I lots of people would thank you hundreds of people would thank you for that that's that's an amazing amazing experiment i unfortunately do not have the fortitude for such an experiment i would get so bored <laughs> coloring the same face in the same way but with different brands if if i did though that would be pretty amazing um pencil colorists seem to be far more obsessed with light fastness than say watercolorist yes yes that is very true um Let's see, uh, fugitive pigments were mentioned, but not made a big thing of. <laughs> oh, hey, Leslie, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. Ah, 1999. That is the cost of this pencil box on Amazon. $14.99 on the Castle Art site. I imagine that the Amazon price also changes depending on where you are. It might be different in different countries and it may change depending on the seller. Some people resell products. So the Amazon price will change. So somewhere between 15 and $20 you can get this box for. I think that's a very reasonable price. It's, it's not like, oh my God, it's so cheap. Um, nor is it overpriced, definitely not overpriced. I think it's like spot on. That's, that's what pencils like this and this amount of pencils should cost. So this is affordable. It's not, I wouldn't call them budget pencils, but they're affordable. Um, on Amazon UK, they're currently on sale for 16, uh, rather than 25. Oh, okay. So sometimes they're, they're going to be sales as well. Um, I did color different faces. Oh, okay. But it would be interesting to do the same one to compare. Yeah, like that, that way you'd have the control in your experiment you, if you color the same face in the same way. But again, it would drive you insane. Like doing the same thing over and over again is so... Like I, I would not be able to do it. Two, I would be able to do two. And I've done that. I've done a comparison between pencils and markers. There's a video on that somewhere on, on YouTube on my channel where I compare uh, actually skin tone coloring on with pencils versus brush markers. And that was, that was not tedious at all. That was very engaging and interesting for me because the process of color application is completely different. Although I tried to keep it in the same steps so that for the, for the video, for the side by side, look, it, it would be interesting, but uh, yeah, it was a challenge to do a light skin tone with markers. Uh, so for me, it was super interesting to do the same face twice in different ways. Very, very interesting. Oh, wow. There are many different sets from Castle Arts on the German side, uh, but not this set. It seems, what? 
what is up germany come on get with the program i have so many german viewers and i keep reviewing pencils that aren't available in germany <laughs> but remember what we talked about this whole color chart where is it where's the color chart there was it was a big color chart of like all the pencils here. There it is. They're all of these colors. So as long as you have a set, I think all castle arts behave more or less the same, if not the same. So I don't think you need this specific set. You know, my the title of the show is this the last skin tone set you'll ever need. And, you know, as we get further and further in the show, we can keep talking about that, like, will this take care of all of my skin tone needs? It's actually a very skillfully put together set. I am very impressed with it. I think it's very close to being the ultimate skin tone sets, but I don't believe that there is an ultimate skin tone set. Again, based just on the amount of variables that exist in every single portrait scenario. Like sometimes you'll need a bright orange. Sometimes you'll need a green. There isn't a shade of green in the set. Honestly, the ultimate portrait set is the full range it's the 150 or the 300 set of any brand that's the ultimate skin tone set with that you can take care of everything but you know that's obviously taking it too far and that's that's one end of the extreme um but um surprisingly i am very pleased with the set i don't think you need this set specifically to even color this page as long as you follow my steps and my principles of color application. So notice we started with a very light dusty rose. Then we added a little bit of a light terracotta. And now we're adding this beautiful kind of a chestnut brown to the shadows. As long as you can find those pencils in the set and like all castle arts are going to have those those are very basic pencils you can absolutely do this coloring it doesn't have to be the portrait set it can be any one of the castle art sets uh let's see ah yes that sounds very repetitive and that's coming from a person who teaches themselves animation <laughs> yes I would do the same face with different brands just because curiosity would drive me bonkers. Yeah, as long as you can survive it. I think the full set is 120 pencils and there's a pastel set and a metallic. They're all wax pencils. The gold are oil pencils. The gold, I have an experience with um, the metallics in the 120 set. I have the 120 pencil set. And the metallics, they are amazing. They are actually metallic. And they're really tasty too. They're not just gold and silver. They're gold, silver, copper, bronze, but also pink metallic, blue metallic, green metallic. Come on, lilac metallic. They're amazing. Again, difficult pencils to use. Obviously, you wouldn't use metallics on a skin tone. But for backgrounds, for like flapper designs with, with the gold leaf and everything, that would be super cool. I have the 520 Brute Funer set, and it's a lot of pencils. Wow, 520 is the biggest set I've ever heard of. My biggest set is 250 pencils, and, and obviously they don't stay in the set. I pull out like 20 to 50 that I use, and the rest stay unused completely. One of the pencil sets that I have in my Amazon wish list is a new Prismacolor set, the big one, the 150, uh, because even though I have lots of completely unused pencils, <clears throat> they're all green. <laughs> the ones that I use a lot, like all of my grays are completely gone at this point. So my, um, my Prismacolor set is essentially gone and diminished. So I have it up on the list again, because I do use Prismacolor a lot and I teach a lot. Uh, there are likes missing guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that note. If you are watching, hit that like button. If you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you feel that I work really hard and don't get paid enough like the rest of the art word, drop me a super chat or a super thanks. It really helps the channel and it helps me stay motivated. So I do appreciate all of the super thanks that, that come in throughout the week. I appreciate them a lot. Unfortunately, I can't call them out on the show because they don't happen live. But when the super chats happen live on the show, they get popped up right on the screen. 
Uh, if you're not a channel member, hit the join button. I have three memberships on my channel. Members get lots of gifts and uh, extra surprises. There's an entire free advanced lesson that's hidden from the rest of the world waiting for my top supporters that's just sitting there. If you join as a top supporter, it will still be there for you. My lucky ducky members, when we do giveaways, you guys have like five times the luck, literally. Like when the bot rolls for, for the players in the giveaway, you have five times the luck from anyone else. And we do a lot of giveaways on this show. And my um, baby sharks always get um, gift pages and uh, some other surprises. Well, everyone gets gift pages and other surprises, but baby sharks are the lowest tier. So hit the join button, become a channel member. I thank you kindly in advance. Uh, let's see. I like the idea of metallic pencils, uh, but I find it really hard to use them because the shimmer is never as good as I imagined. Yes, that is very true. That is very true. That's why I would only use metallics for flat backgrounds. So like I mentioned, like an art deco design with gold leaf on the background. For that, I would use metallic pencils, but you can't shade with metallics. That's the problem. So like if you want to do a metallic hair or like a metallic dress, I wouldn't actually use um, metallic pencils. I would create the metallic effect with light and shadow and gradient transitions and all that. So the only the only way that I would use it, and the same with paint, like if I'm doing an acrylic painting and I'm using gold or, or copper or bronze, I would only use it for like a flat background for that Art Deco look or an Art Nouveau look with a flat gold backgrounds and like super realistic skin tone shading. For me, those are very attractive designs. In the video description, this is one of the links. If you guys are ever looking for any of my books specifically, that's the list to all of them. And of course, that's always up on my website. All right, moving on to darker colors. This is drum roll. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. What is this? Oh, I didn't pop that one up on the screen. Oh no, we'll never know. We will never know. Let me see. It looked like a dark brown. There it is. This is burnt umber. Oh, <gasps> burnt umber. How did you know? Did you see it on the screen when I when I actually? Oh my god, everyone. <laughs> you guys are good. Burnt umber, burnt umber. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, proof. Burnt Umber. Sorry about that. I either missed it or it didn't render. Burnt Umber. So notice that I'm following the same steps for skin and hair, working from uh, light to dark. However, I'm using slightly different moods of brown. So I'm going for more yellowish brown on the hair and I'm going for reddish brown on the skin. That's very important. Hey, Balma, welcome. Always great to have you. I have these tones in my bigger set. Yeah, I think all of these are also in the bigger set. None of these look like specialty pencils and they all have very basic names like Burnt Umber. Like Burnt Umber is a basic, basic brown. Burnt Sienna is a basic brown. Light Terracotta is a basic brown. Like there's no way that they made these colors just for the... Uh, for the portrait set, but it seems like they collected all the best colors for most portraits that you will do and packaged them up as a special portrait deal. That's my guess on how this happened. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Some people really like coloring close up portraits and they know, like, they already did the work for you, they already organized pretty much all the colors that you will need for a portrait. And again, um, my girl has a completely different skin tone from this girl. You can see that her skin, sorry for the reflection, um, but this girl on the leaflet, her skin is um, like a dark olive or like a bronze skin, a very, um, yeah, like a, like a very bronze skin. And this girl that, that I'm coloring, her skin is, it's not even peachy. It's it's pale. It's like pale cream, very pink, very pale. So completely different skin tone set. 
um, completely different skin tone, yet I am able to balance the colors um, to make it look realistic. So it's not like you can only color this girl with this set, which is why I always tell you don't rely on the tutorials. And I, like it's nice that they provide the, the outline of this portrait and they give you a tutorial of how to color it step by step. But if you rely on that, that's all you'll ever be able to do. Then you will only be able to color this girl following their steps. What I like to teach you guys is how to take whatever tools you have and create whatever effects you want with whatever art you feel like doing it with, whether it's your own illustration or somebody else's illustration from a book. So don't think that this particular set will take care of a particular skin tone. It will not. Um, but it is a very nice range of colors to create pretty much any skin tones. We have very pale pinks. We have a range of um, both pinks, peaches, and browns. All three pinks, peaches, and browns. We have we have um, some that are on the yellow side and some that are on the reddish side. And that's also very important for skin tones. So, so far, I'm, I'm quite impressed. This is a very classic portrait set. I myself am classically trained. And for me, this is very pleasant to see this very classic skin tone palette. It, it is beautiful. It's very friendly. You don't really need to be a professional artist to be able to use it. I don't think you even need their tutorial to be able to use it. It's really self-explanatory. You just need to start coloring with it and the colors will guide you. I think it's super friendly. So, so far I am very impressed with this set. Absolutely. Um, my natural sienna pencil is actually the pencil that I used most, judging by its length, and it's directly followed by Payne's Gray. Love this color. Yeah, you can always tell the favorite pencil by how short it is. My, I have, so I have like these boxes of, um, of pencils that I use all the time. I don't keep things in sets. I generally take out all of the, um, all of the little plastic guides that come inside the pencil boxes where the pencils sit nicely. I take those out, I throw them in the trash right away and I just keep the tin. And then I pile up all the pencils into the tin and the ones that I don't use end up on the bottom and the ones that I use a lot end up on the top. I try to keep the brands together, but within the set, I don't keep them organized. I just keep them all piled into this tin. And it's funny because after any length of time, the ones on the bottom are full length, brand new pencils, never even sharpened by me. And the ones on the top are like yay big. Like you have to use a pencil extender to actually get any color of them. And some of them are so short, I can't even physically um, sharpen them anymore because they're so short. So it's, it's really funny. And they're so tiny that they're all over the place. You know, the longer pencils, they actually like line up and everyone rolls in the same direction. Not these, they're pretty much square. They're like the same length as they are width and they're just like rolling all over the place. And pretty much my entire Prismacolor gray set scale is in that area. And so all of my warm grays and cool grays and French grays, yay long which is why it's in my Amazon wish list. Uh, so if you're going into an apocalypse shelter and you could only take one skin tone set, which would you take? Funny you should say an apocalypse shelter because as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to play Fallout 76 for my Twitch channel. <laughs> I am really into apocalypse shelters these days. So. If you were going into an apocalypse shelter and you could only take one skin tone set, which would you take? And what other six pencils would you take too? Ooh, okay. So if I was going into an apocalypse shelter today and I had to pack my skin tone sets, hmm, I would actually, I would actually take the set. That's, that's a really, big statement to make. I would actually take the set. I noticed that sharpening the pencils uh, doesn't eat a lot of them. They seem to be very long lasting pencils, which is why I would take this over Black Widows. Uh, I would take it over Prismacolor because you said skin tones. If it was just a general set, I would take my skin, my, my Prismacolor set. But if I had to take a skin tone set, I would absolutely take this one. And my six others would all be Prismacolors. It would be Prismacolor white, Prismacolor 20% French gray, a couple of darker browns from Prismacolor, Prismacolor deep purple, and Prismacolor black. 
those would be the pencils that I would take into my, my fallout shelter today. I love to organize them by number. The only thing organized in my room are my pencil sets. <laughs> Who else is like that? Who else is like super into organizing their art supplies? Because I'm totally not. I love getting them. I love receiving new pencil sets. I love opening them live on the show. I love recording them when they're all brand new in their boxes. And then they all go into the pile. Everything goes into a pile. If I didn't have like a Roomba vacuum going around the floor, I would just have a big mountain of pencils on the floor. Uh, but instead, I try to keep them in somewhat manageable boxes of um, of pencils by brand. <laughs> but I am not an organized artist at all. I have like I have there's there's reason to the madness. There's order within my chaos. And it makes sense to me and it works for me, but I'm not one of those people who have like the pretty shelves and everything's organized by color like it is in an art store. I admire those people. That's beautiful. My mom-in-law is like that with her sewing supplies. Her studio is beautiful. She has her fabrics all organized on the shelves, all by color, all by texture. It's amazing. And some people are like that with pencils. It's absolutely fantastic. For me, it's distracting though. If I spend any amount of time organizing my pencils, then I I just it doesn't work with my with my art making style. I need to have my most used colors and tools within reach. So I actually have my stuff organized by groups, my most used group, my second go-to pile of stuff and things that go on the shelf that I will never use again. Um, so that's that's my organizational strategy. But how pretty it looks isn't a determining factor at all. Uh, let's see. I'd be obsessive if I wasn't living out of box. So <laughs> Golden yellow. Thank you. The golden yellow I brought in for the hair. She has blonde hair. And notice again, rules are being broken. Even though I already established my darkest co color on the hair, I am now coming in with a lighter color. So can you do that? Even though the instructions specifically say go from lighter to darker, I am going from darker to lighter. For gradient transitions, you can go either way with any brand. However, understand that with some brands, you can actually add lighter colors on top of darker ones and lighten them. Not so with Castle Art. So going in with this lighter pencil, I'm going in knowing that all my dark areas are there to stay. So yes, you can color over the dark with light. It's just nothing's going to happen. So here, it doesn't matter if I did the yellow first and the brown second or the other way around. Either way is fine. It's just that I can't use this light yellow to lighten the brown. And that's an important distinction to make. My desk is a big mess. It's just my sets that are organized. <laughs> my desk is usually a big mess too. I just clean it up for the show. <laughs> really just like wipe everything off to the side and make this, this area behind me pretty. But you guys should see that side of the room. That's why the camera is not pointed that way. I keep every set of pencils in the box they came in and in the same order they were. Oh my God, that would drive me insane. I like the look of the boxes. The only thing organized here. Yeah, I love the look as well, but it's just, it, it just doesn't work. But I also do a lot of drawing and coloring. I don't know how, how much time you guys spent coloring. Let, let me know in the comments. How much time do you spend on coloring a day and also... Um, how many coloring pages do you produce in a month? Is for me, I do something with pencils pretty much every day. So having to put everything back in your in their places, never gonna happen. Plus, as soon as I'm done with the project, I just kind of like to do a mic drop and leave the room, <laughs> like a pencil drop, and leave the room. I cleaning up the room and putting everything back in its places is like the last thing I want to do. I have so much craft stuff that I have to have it in some order. Oh, I, I have order. I just don't have pretty. That's that's the difference here. Uh, it's disorganization incarnate, unfortunately. <laughs> Me too. Though I can't do the same with monarchs. They were not organized by numbers and I can't remember the exact arrangement. So I have to guess. <laughs> I don't spend enough time. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure... It, it's for a good reason. I'm sure you have a life and a job and other things to do. 
All right, I'm going to try this bright pink. I was pleasantly surprised to find actual bright pinks in this set as well because this character needs blush. She is very feminine, very flirty, and she does have this very strong blush on her face. That's the character that she is in the in the series. So I want to add this blush. This blush I found um, to be a little bit difficult to add. This is the first moment in this coloring that I've actually come to a point where I'm like, some of my colorists are going to hate this. <laughs> you know, for some people it's going to come easy, but I'm actually using a lot more of my coloring wizardry skills to apply this color smoothly. It, it was a little bit clumpy and it's not because there's anything wrong with the pencil. It's because I'm adding this blush over a dark brown already because I'm treating this as I would Prismacolor. So actually, if I were to make a recommendation for those of you who are following along with me, maybe add the blush first and then the dark brown and that will come across a little bit smoother. Um, but honestly, there's no difference. It still came out looking really nicely. The reason that I didn't do it in the other order is because I, I simply didn't think about it. I just was coloring it as a skin tone. And then I looked at the photo closely and I'm like, wow, she has like proper blush on her cheeks. We should add that. And I always like to add a little bit of pink tones around the eyes for a more feminine look. That's just my thing. That's how I color. That's how I draw portraits. And I'm going to smooth out the blush a little bit with um, with the Q-tip. And that's going to take care of that little clumpy accident that I had. But honestly, it's not a big deal. It's not like it damaged the surface of the brown or anything. I think the blush actually came out really nice. But honestly, it took a little bit more skill and care to add that blush nicely with this really dark, um, with this really bright pink. So just be careful, you know, it's not going to color itself. You do have to apply some skill to it. You have to apply some care to it. I only put the Prisma colors in a new home, sorted them by color final family and by number. No idea why I do that. <laughs> I go through phases. Some color, sometimes I color every day for a month, usually in the summer, but then I go for months without coloring because I'm spinning or something else. Oh, that is very cool. And that's that's the current color that I'm using. I do also go through phases. Obviously, there are things that I do throughout the months to keep the show going. Then individual lessons for my patrons, individual lessons for my channel members, for my private students. So there are a number of colorings that I have to do during the month. That's like the bare minimum of what I can do in a month. Um, but then there's months where I just color and draw for fun all the time. And then there are other months, like you said, in the summer, I'm more, um, I'm more outdoorsy and I go out and I do stuff and I ride my bike and stuff. So I, I spend less time at my desk drawing and coloring and more time outdoors doing stuff. This color I found absolutely delicious. Who's on it? Um, alizarin Crimson. Alizarin? Alizarin? Something red and beautiful and delicious. Absolutely amazing, amazing color. Like It's a sophisticated kind of a crimson. It's not just your plain all red. It's not a plain on all burgundy or... Um, or... Um, can't think of another color. <laughs> There's another name from a Prismacolor set that, that I was thinking of. Um, I don't actually have an equivalent to this color. It's just very, very beautiful, very beautiful crimson. Let's see what the purple is like. Hey, for those of you who were placing bets on Foxtail in the beginning of the show, he's still with us. Look at that. He is still in the beanbag. That's the longest he's ever stayed in the beanbag for a show. That's amazing. I think his record was five minutes and now he's going on, what, an hour now? A little over an hour? That's amazing. Okay, that's a trick that I use in... Oh, no, I jinxed it. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Off he goes. All right, let me get a replacement. Hold on. Shelby, honey, your turn. Oh, you're sleeping now, you're sleeping now. All right, now our original lovely assistant is with us. 
Uh, I need to color every day. Hopefully I still start again in the spring when I'm drawing. It's hard for me to do both. That is true. I love this red. I know this red is so delicious. But now we are on purple aubergine. Purple is essential for skin tones. Again, if you've taken my, my uh, skin tone coloring courses, you know all about that skin tone mastery course. Not a single skin tone in that course is done without purple. Purple is essential for realistic skin tone. So I was once again, very pleased and very impressed that this set carries the purple. Purple brings everything together in a darker sh shadow area. And notice that I'm adding it both to the skin and the hair that kind of brings everything together in the same realm in the same lighting. Additionally, I used the purple, the dark purple to actually outline her mascara and her eyelashes because we will make them even darker, but I like to have that, that little undertone of dark purple. It's kind of magenta and burgundy with a poppy red in one. The, the red, yes, that's an excellent description of that. That's exactly what it's like. It's, it's like a magenta and a burgundy and the poppy red all in one. That's, that's precisely it. And it's, it's just, it's so, it's like, it's like a raspberry, you know, like a, like a deep, delicious ras raspberry, very, very tasty color. And that's, you know, I want this girl to be very feminine, very, like she is the goddess of spring. So she has to be full of light and energy and, and, and sensuality and sexuality and, and, and all of those things that she was in the TV series. So I want to bring it out with color as much as possible. Now, this part is going to be technically tricky for a lot of you. I've seen many people color this page over the years. I drew it in 2020 when the pandemic started. I remember that we did our survival coloring podcast with this, with this coloring page. It was one of the first ones. A lot of people colored it over the years and many people color it in different colors. They give her different skin tones. They give her different hair color and they all look absolutely amazing. But the one thing that I noticed over the years is that a lot of people totally mess up the mouse. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's the truth. And that's because an open mouth is very difficult to color. And perhaps I should do more shows on how to handle things like different expressions and like an open mouth or partially open mouth. Um, tongues sticking out is also a problem for a lot of people because we're used to just like closed lips illustrations. So an open mouth is legit difficult for artists. It's not because colorists can do it or anything like that. It's a difficult, difficult thing to do. And the most important thing to understand is, well, first of all, work from a reference image. In this case, you will have my coloring as a complete reference image. You can also search for, you can Google search for American Gods Ostara, and you will find a lot of snapshots of that scene, or even you can um, YouTube it. You can YouTube Ostara in season one, and it's the final, it's the final episode where she comes out as Ostara and she's like, that's it. I am the goddess of spring. I'm going, I'm going to bring the spring to, to the world right now. Um, and you can see what her mouth actually looks like and what it looks like and what it always looks like when it's open is it's just black inside. It's just blackness because it, it's a big hollow area and there's no light in there. So the problem that I see with some colorings of the open mouth is that people try to give it too much gradient transitions and uh, like make it look like a pink tongue in there and it ends up looking like she has a ball in her mouth which is really weird so on an open mouth if there is a gradient keep it very very dark so it doesn't look like she's actually holding something inside of her mouth and it's really easy to fix just go darker so if you've colored this page and that has been your experience with the look that's my advice to you. Um, go back and just darken everything up as much as possible. All right. We have this beautiful pure blue in the set. Again, a very cool choice for skin tone set. A lot of people would wonder about that. Like, why do you need a sky blue in a skin tone set? But you do. For one, a lot of people have blue eyes and you can't really do a portrait without an eye color. So having blue is very useful. Now there is no green, but you can easily make green with blue and yellow and there is yellow in the set. So that's definitely not anything that's missing here. Uh, additionally, I added a little bit of that blue to the eyelids 
because she's wearing makeup. She has a lot of lavender in her outfit and like her colors are all pastel and lavender and her makeup is actually lavender. So adding that blue over my already established magenta makeup created the perfect, the perfect effect that I was looking for. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, very funny. Loves, loves. I hate green. I hate it. Now, black. Black is important in every set. I always test how good the black is. My favorite black is Prismacolor black. It's amazing. Prismacolor black and Prismacolor white are my favorite black and white pencils of all time. And sometimes I stray and I find some new brands that I'm into at the time, um, but those always remain true. I always go to Prismacolor for black and white. So here I was interested in seeing how good the black is and it is very good. It is very good. It's very strong. You can definitely create a pure black pigment for things like eyelashes and, um, eyebrows but I can also add just a little bit of black shading to the inside of her upper eyelids to increase that shadow to make it really super dramatic and at this point I'm actually going for drama so I'm going to push it a little bit further it was already looking very nice and soft and delicate if that's where you want to leave it that's perfectly fine with me I like to go for drama so we're gonna go and push it as far as we can because I'm also testing this set I want to make sure that the black can go to its full potential and I want to make sure that I can use black for my shading to actually increase the shades of colors so I'm going to add a little bit of it to the hair as well let's see I love polys for my hair strokes since they stay sharp for me oh that's a good point that's an excellent point. Sky blue, black. Thank you for calling out the colors. I think Lisa needs to do a live on gimmicky things in the art space. <laughs> oh, ivory black. Sorry. Yeah, there are there are several gimmicky things in the art space, and then there are straight up incorrect things that I see people teach on other YouTube channel, like uh, how to brandish your page texture with pencils. That's like a super no no in the art world. And I go to coloring channels, and they're like, "So to flatten the tooth of the paper, press on it really hard." And I'm like, "Oh my god, you should not be teaching people. That is so wrong." Uh, so then then there's that. <laughs> So back to the mouse. Look how dark I'm making it. Don't be scared to go dark. But notice if I leave the gradient transition there, it's going to look really weird. And especially if it's a little bit rounded, it's just going to turn into a ball and it's going to look like she has like a ball in her mouth, which is not the look we're going for. We want it actually darker in the center. Some people I've seen do dark around the sides and lighter in the center. Looks like a ball. The distance is further in, you know, the closer to the center is deeper into her mouth that's where it's darker so make sure to go really really dark super fun idea are you guys just want me to talk crap about other shows <laughs> it's a fun idea it's gonna piss off a lot of people you understand that right <laughs> which is fine which is fine um but yeah there are there are some gimmicks there are some um um wrong ideas and teachings there's some misconceptions there's some urban tales um and then there are things that are important and people are overlooking so uh we can certainly like if you guys are up for like a jerry springer show <laughs> we can do it <laughs> certainly but um but feathers will fly yes yes <laughs> That would be a fun topic, gimmicky stuff. Oh, all right, all right. If you guys are into that kind of thing, be be sure you're ready. Uh, because you know me, you guys. I have no filter. I am not going to sugarcoat things. If I heard something dumb on somebody else's show, I'm not going to call them out by name. But I am going to describe what they taught, and I am going to call it dumb, because that's what it is. So... <laughs> And of course, someone's going to figure out who I'm talking about and then it's going to get all personal. So I don't I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to um, to go that far yet. Would you do a video on coloring the skins of fairies or demons? Yes, absolutely. Like fantasy skin tones. Absolutely. That's a super fun topic. We can do unusual skin tones. Absolutely. I'll make it happen. Uh, let's see. Ah, Michelle. Hello. 
same rules for all skin tones ah michelle perfect timing hold on hold on hold on hold on let me play that back this we're gonna we're gonna play it back because michelle just came in and this go go back go back go back these are a gift from michelle thank you very much i was going to do more of a reveal of these but i couldn't wait because i happened to need a white gel pen for this eye there is a white pencil in this pencil set but the white pencils don't work the way that prismacolor works but even prismacolor white wouldn't be enough to make the perfect white reflective dot on the eye here because i went so dark with black so there's no way you absolutely have to add um white gel pen so this is my brand new white gel pen and this right here is literally the first time that i'm trying it and i love it I totally love it. Thank you so much. I've been suffering with gel pens for so long. And these are actually quite amazing. I think I have a link to it in the video description. I may only have the link to the pencils. I'm not sure if I don't have the link. I'll go back to the description and I will add um, the link so you guys can check it out. Because... <laughs> because uh, I am I am happy with this gel pen. I wouldn't recommend using a white gel pen for like shading or coloring larger areas of your page, but for glitter, glimmer, and little highlights, for little pearl effects, for those reflections in the eyes, on the lips, a white gel pen sometimes is a lifesaver. So that's always a really cool effect. Getting a white gel pen is totally cool. Ah, uh, we do like to stir the proverbial pot. All right, you guys asked for it. <laughs> if I lose half of my subscribers because of you, <laughs> you guys are buying me new Prismacolor sets. <laughs> um, I still use Black Widows for skin tones as well. Oh, cool. So cool. Yeah, I still love them so much. There are, like, I have um, some things that I don't like about Black Widows anymore. Um but not, I have no complaints about the quality of the pencils at all. I still very much love them. And uh, I have, again, like, I don't know if the formulas are being changed or not. The sets that I have are pretty ancient. They're still from like three years ago. So, or two years ago. And uh, the ones that I have are amazing to the touch. They're amazing on paper. I have no beef with the quality of the pencils at all. There isn't a single pencil in the Black Widow collection not even the green ones, uh, that I would say don't look good on paper or aren't strong on paper or don't blend well. They all blend well. My only beef with Black Widow is that I outgrew the whole naming thing and um, the random order thing. Like, the sets are not actually calibrated for anything. They're just pretty gimmick sets. And uh, since I started teaching, I have higher needs for very well-organized sets. So for me, they just stopped working for those purposes. But for a casual colorist, I still highly recommend them. I just, I don't really like that you need to buy all of them for it to be a functional collection. Like, there isn't one big Black Widow set that's 120 page, uh, pencils or 150 pencils. Like, you have to buy all five boxes or all six boxes, whatever it is at this point. Um, so that's, that's my only somewhat beef with them, but I, it's not even that big of a deal. I still really love them and I still use them and especially, especially for skin tones. They're just, they just make such delicious, beautiful, realistic skin tones. I love them. And for me on the paper that I use, I don't get glare at all. I like to color on Strasmo paper and on Strasmo paper, I don't get glare with Black Widow pencils. Even with Prismacolor, I get a little bit of a glare sometimes depending on the paper and depending on the light. Uh, but with Black Widows, I've never had anything but really smooth coloring. So yeah, for me, they're still great pencils. And no, I'm not paid by Black Widow pencils to say so. <laughs> Well, the person who made that comment is probably not watching the show. <laughs> uh, 
uh, this is, I didn't um, do announcements of colors for the decorations, for the flower and the dress and all of that stuff. Um, but they are the pencils. Um, this is like the, the lilac that goes there. So I'm just going to add a little bit. It's hard for me to color part of the page, but I didn't want to color the entire thing. As you guys notice, this is done. This is entirely done in one take and in real time. I didn't skip through anything and I didn't speed up through anything. So this is my actual coloring speed. So for me, this is an hour and I don't know, how long have we been streaming? An hour and a half? An hour and 15 minutes? Something like that? I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half. An hour and a half uh, to get to this point. Some people are faster than that. Some people are slower than that. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I always tell you that speed in coloring doesn't, doesn't matter. Some, some effects are achieved better if you are able to shade quickly. Um, but some effects take a lot of care and a lot of precision and a lot of blending. So, um, I don't know what your coloring style is, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with a portrait like that taking a week or several weeks. Like, I also don't know what your available time for coloring is. So factor all those things in. But I didn't want to color the entire page for this lesson. I only wanted to cover the skin tone parts to answer my own question. Is this the ultimate skin tone set that you will ever need? Uh, but it's difficult for me to leave part of the page uh, colored and the rest blank. So I always like to trail off my designs as much as possible. So even though she has this huge flower on her hat, uh, I didn't color the entire thing. I did exercise self-control, uh, but I did want to trail it off a little bit because that whole clash of an uncolored flower over part of her face was really bothering me. I really wanted to see the, the colors there. And also, I really love blue. And working with blue and lilac is genuinely pleasant and relaxing for me. And this character, she wears a lot of blue and lilac. So I added a little bit of those colors and I'm going to do a little bit more work on the background. So even when I don't pop up the names on the screen, you can see that I still like to offer them should you wish to scrub through the video and actually pause on those areas and, and uh, see the color names. I see that Ty has no problem seeing the names. I was concerned about it because um, the names, they're clearly, clearly written here, but they are written in silver. Uh, in a very easy to read font, um, but silver is difficult to film on camera. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of glare on these pencils. That's why I keep turning them as much as possible so that in the turn, you guys can catch the name without the glare because I have the overhead lights uh, to light my page. But in real life, it's very easy to read these names. They're not problematic at all. So one of the things that I do when I, when I create portraits is I make sure to use the colors from the face in other elements of the composition as well. So even though the flower on her head is blue and purple, I still added a little bit of that peachy tone to the, to the petals. Ah, Naples yellow. This is a cool color. Okay. I couldn't, I couldn't stop once again. So I decided to fill in the background. Oh, thank you for those thumbs up, you guys. I see that no one's giving me thumbs down for <laughs> for talking crap about some uh, um, some uh, myths uh, that are out there. <laughs> I only tell you guys what I know. I tell you what I learned in art school, and I tell you what works for me and for other artists out there. Uh, so it's never ever personal. Uh, oh no, feeling really poorly. I'm so going to have to leave you guys love you guys have to leave you thank you for the pleasant evening oh i'm so sorry you're not feeling well thank you so much for coming to the show we are almost done anyway i'm just going to add this background um to bring everything together as much as possible and then we'll be done but thank you so much for sitting through the the whole uh, skin tone coloring i hope you guys are finding this useful if you have any questions for me at all please feel free to ask me in the in the live chat because that's what these live shows are for i am here to talk to you guys i'm here to answer any of your questions or any of your doubts and um, there may be things that I'm forgetting to mention um, about my experience as well. I have a, a ton of posted notes here to remind me about the things that I need to mention. But there, there are some things that I sometimes forget to say. Um, so if anything at all uh, comes to mind, please ask me. So for me at this point, I am genuinely impressed with this pencil set. I already liked Castle Arts, but I was kind of on the fence with them. 
Um, my main castle art said, I always say that it, the colors aren't strong enough and maybe I should go back and do another review of those, another test drive of those, because here I didn't have that problem at all. The, the colors are very, very strong, but very gentle, if that's, if that makes sense. Like they are great saturation, very strong feel to a color. Like I can get a pure saturation of that color in its full intensity without applying a lot of pressure to the page. So to me, that's a measure of a high quality pencil. However, they're so pleasant and gentle that I believe that a heavy handed colorist will greatly enjoy coloring with this and will be able to make smooth, smooth gradient transitions, even if, um, even if you're heavy handed. So I would recommend it. You know, I can't guarantee anything. I can't say that if you get this, all of your blending problems will go away and all of a sudden your skin tones will look a lot smoother because I don't know you. I don't know how you work. Uh, but I can predict certain things based on my experience. And uh, I would definitely recommend this set for people who are heavy handed, who would like to make their portraits look a little bit smoother, a little bit more um, gentle and realistic. And uh, on that note, my camera that I use to record this, this is a 4K camera that is brutal on the detail. So every single a uh, texture wrinkle of the page is super visible on the screen. In reality, this looks a lot smoother. So even the texture that you're seeing on her face, it's not actually there. In fact, here's the book. Let me pull up that page and I can show you on this, on this regular 180 cam, not the, not the, not the 4k, but you can see how smooth that shading is. So now this camera doesn't have a very strong um, color setting. So that's that's a bit of a problem. That's why I don't record with these cameras for my for my coloring because the colors are a little bit muted on this. On the 4K cam, my colors are very pure, but it is brutal on the details. So <laughs> it reveals everything, every little blam blamish, every little scratch, everything. There's there's no uh, there's no hiding it. But I kind of like it that way as well. This way you guys have full transparency. There's nothing, there's nothing hidden. Um, it could be, it could be due to the type of paper as well. Um, no, that, this camera does it with everything. <laughs> like it still looks really good, but it looks so much smoother in real life. It's just, it picks up on, on absolutely everything. It does that to, to skin as well. Like you'll see little, skin textures and whatnot you can see it on my hand like you can actually see when i'm when i'm coloring you can you can see the texture of my skin like the camera is just too good <laughs> and that's it kids that brings us to the end of the coloring i hope you enjoyed it i hope you are inspired to color this page or other pages like this with extreme close-ups of faces don't forget to use your lighting to your advantage. Try different dramatic lighting scenarios. Always work from a reference photo. Notice how half of her face is really dark brown, even though her skin tone is pale. I can't help but lecture. I'm sorry, these are meant to be <laughs> pencil reviews, not lessons on how to color skin tones. But it's very hard for me not to share these tips with you, so I always will as they come up. If you are interested in coloring skin tones, I offer two skin tone courses, one called realistic skin tone coloring, and that's up on Udemy and Skillshare. On Skillshare, you can actually take it for free. On Udemy, I also offer skin tone mastery. Mastery, I teach on white paper, and that's a super lengthy and advanced course, and it will really boost your skin tone coloring of any skin tone type. It will teach you how to make your own color combos and color charts and everything like that. So check it out. The links to everything are in the video description. You can go straight to them and browse, sign up for whatever you need. Everything is there. Thank you guys. That courses are great. Thank you so much. Looks like nobody has any further questions. So I am going to say goodbye and farewell. And I'll think about that Jerry Springer show that you guys want so badly. It's not out of the question. We may make it happen. The, the myths of art and coloring and uh, how we'll break them. <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for coming. 
have fun coloring and I'll see you soon. Bye.